Thanks for joining the video. We've been working on various parts of the boat so that we can meet Category 1 requirements so that we're able to leave New Zealand with the boat. So that's been keeping us pretty busy. Um, but in addition to our normal video content, we're going to try something a little bit different as well, um, starting with this video. So I'll hand over to Vicky and she'll explain to you what our plan is. If you've been watching our videos for a while, you may have noticed in a few of them when I ask Adam what our plans are, in my terms meaning where are we sailing to, he often says, oh we're going to go out and practice our jibing, hoving to, steering. So the plan is to go and just get some stuff that we need and then go back to Taiko and then what's the plan Skipper? I think we're going to go out to Tamaki Strait and do some sailing practice, driving, packing, heaving too. And it doesn't always sound like a lot of fun, but the reason he likes us to do this is because when the weather is actually really good and calm, he feels it's important that we become confident in knowing how to do these things rather than waiting for the moment to arise and we uh, don't know what to do or um, might be a little bit of anxiety around it so it's just about practicing those things and last year when we were in the Hauraki Gulf we were sailing to Territory Maitangi and on the sail Adam thought it would be quite a nice idea for me to practice maneuvering the boat under engine meaning you know like docking and how the prop walk works because I think he thinks I'm going to be docking the boat at some point, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But part of it is because um, he does think it's important that I do know how to do this. So while we were out there doing this, there were a lot of events that led up to the situation, but I was right into it and then the engine cut out. What's happened? So we were going out to Turi and we were motoring. Um, and there were a lot of pleasure boats around creating all sorts of wake. We were bucking around and then the engine died and I think that because we only had <coughs> about a quarter of a tank of fuel it's probably the engine's probably sucked up some air so now dug out all the manuals and the books and the tools and just going through the procedure of bleeding the engine and so we're hoping that once we bleed the engine we'll be able to get it running again yeah yeah and it's very hot, isn't it? It's very hot, and the engine's very hot, and it's pretty, the filter's all on the far side of the engine, so it's pretty awkward to get in here. And we had very little wind to actually sail back. We had about two knots of wind, but we did manage to sail back, and the marina staff came up and helped us. The engine was dead, wouldn't go, and it started making us realise, well, We've always deployed the anchor at that point under engine and now the engine wasn't working would we know how to deploy it without the windlass. So it may seem common sense to everyone else that are experienced sailors but to us you know unless you're in a situation like that you start to realise well do we actually know how to do this. We went right through the process of bleeding it, followed the instructions, got a help from you too and the HC is running. It's unbelievable. That's the sound of a running engine. We're running again. 
Yeah. Or for zero dollars, which is even better than <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Good way to know the engine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. It's Happy? Such, such fun. There's a few hoops. Yeah. Few hoops of excitement. That's pretty cool. Okay. As the last 12 months or 18 months have gone on that we've lived on board, we've started doing a lot more things we were practicing. Hello. I was just saying, how are you going to anchor us today? Yeah, heading into Paradise Bay. Adam's obviously trying to shoot his responsibilities as skipper and making me anchor. So I guess I've got to show him how it's done. Yeah, I'll yeah. be watching. I'm trying to pick up some tips. <laughs> of what not to do. This morning, Vicky's. Um, taken charge of this operation of getting back to Russell so that's really cool and uh, so I'll just loiter around and help out where I can but uh, I think it's we're doing this because it's important that um, everyone develops and grows so the hydrovane is doing the steering now which is nice I've uh, locked the helm and so that's all sitting still got the sails nicely balanced we're just on a beam reach and so the hydrovane is pointing directly into the wind out that way and it's just, I've got it on the setting I think's right, there's not a lot of movement in the van, it's just balancing with the wind going left and right a little bit so we're not snaking too much and we're heading in a direction that we want to go in so it's quite cool. As part of our learning, Adam has also been making sure that he keeps advancing his knowledge and skills. One way he has done this is by learning from more experienced sailors and crewing for them on long ocean passages. In 2022, Adam completed his first ocean crossing from Papaiti in Tahiti to Apua in New Zealand, sailing 2,500 nautical miles, and more recently has sailed from Hobart in Tasmania to Vitalivu in Fiji, adding another 2,500 nautical miles to his log. Having blue water sailing experience has not only given Adam invaluable experience, but having this experience is also a Cat 1 requirement for departing New Zealand by sailboat. One of those you would have seen a few times Adam's gone out solo sailing, so he feels confident manoeuvring the boat on his own. And we're just approaching the Kent Passage, so pretty exciting. It's just off high tide, so there's plenty of water in the passage this morning. And we'll be heading through the passage and then heading down to the starboard side and a bit of a downward sail down towards Black Rocks. All is well on board. Um, hopefully I'll get up to a level where I'm confident in managing the boat on our own, on my own, so that if one of us is sick we know what to do. Another skill you'll often see is you always, you might see us hand steering a lot. Got crew on the wheel. Slave driver. Yeah, so, but there's a smile there so that's good. Yes, what do you think? Beautiful morning. It's pretty breezy. Skipper's on the helm and he's loving it, aren't you? Yeah. Adam's shirking his responsibilities again. We've set up a 15 minute watch system. <laughs> just to make sure everything's even. Because <laughs> there's been reports that some crew haven't quite been on the helm as much as one might expect. Yes, so I've had to enforce 15 minute rules. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played. <laughs> and originally that was because we didn't actually have an autopilot. We had great difficulty in getting an autopilot installed. And so for the first year of owning the boat, we actually had to hand steer everywhere, um, which was good, but a little bit tricky in some situations because it meant someone had to be on the helm all the time. So we did eventually get an autopilot installed, someone managed to do it, and but we still practiced hand steering um, because you can't always rely on an autopilot and in actual fact when we picked our friend Joe up in the last video, our autopilot stopped working. Yeah. So becoming confident doing that is also really, really important. So what we decided to do 
is put a series of videos together and we're going to call it Skipper's Boot Camp because that's what it feels like at times. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. We're going to call it Skipper's Boot Camp and we're just, because Adam's got a lot of um, trick ideas up his sleeve of things that he wants us to practice before we head offshore. So you'll see a lot of great content coming out. Adam get, decides what actually is the content that he's going to cover in these videos. So it can range from anything safety-wise that he feels that we should be practicing. In this video, Adam's actually decided that he is going to take Tycho out on his own because the, um, at, on this particular day there's lots of wind and some squalls coming through and he's going to test out our tri-sail. So we've had it for a while but never used it so he's going to go off and do that. So we we'll hope you enjoy it and we'll see you again soon. So the Storm Tri-Sail is a storm sail which can be used in place of the mainsail. It has a surface area of 6 square metres which is slightly smaller than the size of our main with the fourth reef in. A main purpose of the sail is to drive the boat forwards upwind in very strong winds or in storm conditions. So the idea of today was to go out and try out the tri-sail. So I motored down to Pai here, where I anchored temporarily to get the sail hoisted and the sheets attached. Here I'm routing the sheet around a turning block and onto the winch. And I was pleased to be out practicing hoisting the sail as it became clear that the laser jacks needed to be dropped in order to get the sail up the track. second time around, much better. All right, let's get going. So we're officially underway with the storm sail, with the tri sail. Um, it's well, we've got about 13 knots. There's a squall came through just before, but we've just got underway, and here she is. So, just uh, kind of close to a beam reach. So I might be away soon and see what it's like downwind, and then try out all the different points of sail, see how it goes. So we've got the storm cross sail flying. Got a little bit of head sail out as well to help push us along. It's pretty sweet. There's a few issues that we need to sort out. One of those issues is the sheet colour is black, which is also the same colour as our uh, Genoa sheets and our main halyard. Um, so that's no good, we'll have to change it. Uh, probably to something bright. Um, also the sheet diameter at the moment is too narrow to go on to be um, useful in the self-tailing part of this combing winch. So I think we'll um, upscale the sheet size. Um, yeah, so there's a few things already that just need to be sorted out, but that's that's why we're out here doing it. So all good. So we've got 25 to 30 knots going now, and uh, all is well. It was slightly held over, but everything is going really well with the sail, so seems good. 
Thanks so much for joining the video. I hope you enjoyed the Skipper's Bootcamp content. Let us know what you thought of it. Uh, remember to like the video and we love hearing from you with comments so please do comment. Please remember to subscribe and share the video, it really helps us. If you'd like to see more of this, please let us know. And for now, the crew, from the crew of Titaiko, thank you very much for watching and we look forward to sharing future videos with you. See you later.